Hi Assalamualaikum Okay so for today we are still in the theme 1 which is maintenance and continuity of life Okay so in chapter 1 stimuli and responses This is the last subtopic which is uh, 1.4 The importance of responses to stimuli in animals So previously we have learned about the responses in human and also in plants so for today we are going to look at the responses to stimuli in animals and also what are the importance of responses to stimuli in animals okay right so in this subtopic you will be learning about two things okay the first one is you will be able to explain with examples the types of sight and hearing in animals and then the second one is to communicate how sensory organs ensure the survival of animals on earth right okay so there are two types of visions which are stereoscopic and monocular vision so what is the importance of the location of eyes to humans and animals okay so look at these two photos so can you see the difference between the two photos Okay, so human and animals such as cats and owls have a pair of eyes located in front of their head. So we call it as uh, stereoscopic visions. Okay, so if you see on the diagram here, okay, this is for stereoscopic vision. So there are two types of field which are field of monocular vision and also field of stereoscopic vision. Okay, for stereoscopic vision, the large uh, the overlap of both fields is large okay the second one is for animals such as rats chickens and rabbits so they have a pair of eyes located on opposite sides of their head so they have monocular vision okay different from stereoscopic vision so for monocular vision if you can see from the diagram here it only have a small overlap between field of monocular vision and also field of stereoscopic vision okay okay now let's look at the differences between uh, stereoscopic and also monocular vision okay first one for stereoscopic vision okay both eyes located in front of the head while for monocular vision both eye eyes located at the sides of the head okay left and right Okay, and then for stereoscopic vision, it has a narrow field of vision. Okay, while for monocular vision, it has a wide field of vision. Okay, so the third one is for stereoscopic vision, okay, the fields of vision overlap to a great extent. So, the overlapping fields of vision produce vision in three dimensions, okay. Well, for monocular vision, the fields of vision do not overlap or overlap only slightly. So, for monocular vision, it does not produce a three dimensions vision. Okay, so next we look at the stereoscopic vision. Okay, so the three dimensional images from in the overlapping fields of vision will allow the distance, size and also depth of objects to be estimated accurately. Okay, so stereoscopic vision has the ability to estimate distance accurately helps which helps the animals to hunt. Okay, so this characteristic is very suitable for the predators. Okay, therefore humans and most predators have stereoscopic vision. Okay, well for monocular vision, okay, the two-dimensional images form in the non-overlapping fields of vision will prevent the distance, size, and depth of objects from being estimated accurately. So, for monocular vision, okay, a wide field of vision helps these animals to detect their enemies coming from any direction. So, most prey have monocular vision, right? Okay, so what is stereophonic hearing? So, stereophonic hearing is hearing by using both ears. Okay, stereophonic hearing allows us to determine the direction of the sound accurately. So, what is the importance of having a pair of ears to human and animals? Okay, so if the animals and human have a pair of ears, it will allow them to determine the direction of the sound accurately. 
Okay, so the importance of stereophonic hearing to human is to determine the location of a source of sound. Okay, for example, from the diagram, from the photo below, you can see that a boy is playing a musical instrument. So, the other boy will be able to detect the source of sound, the direction of the source of sound by using his ears, both of his ears. Okay, so stereophonic hearing helps predators to determine the location of their prey and also conversely, stereophonic hearing also helps prey to determine the location of their predators and to escape from them. Okay, so this is for the animals. Okay, so based on the diagram, the ear which is nearer to the source of sound, which is the right ear, okay, here. So it receives sound earlier and louder than the other ear, okay, which is the left ear. So the difference in time and loudness of the sound received by both ears is detected by the brain, which then allows us to determine the direction of the source of sound, which is from the right, okay. Okay, so different animals can hear sounds of different frequencies. Okay, so if you can see here, so these are the frequencies of hearing range. For example, sea lion have 450 until 50,000 hertz range. Rat has 200 until 80,000 hertz. Bat can hear from 2,000 until 110,000 hertz. Dog can hear 67 until 45,000 hertz. Elephant can listen to 16 until 12,000 hertz. And dolphin can listen to 40 until 100,000 hertz. So these are the frequencies of hearing range for different animals. Okay, And also from, uh, from what we have learned before, if you can still remember, so human can detect Okay, the limited to the range of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Okay, meaning that if the sounds have the, diff, uh, the frequency below 20 hertz or above 20,000 hertz, so that sound cannot be detected by human. So we cannot listen to the sound produced below 20 hertz or above 20,000 hertz. Okay, so sensory organs ensure the survival of animals on Earth. So certain animals will respond to certain stimuli to make sure that they can survive on the earth. Okay. So animals are capable of detecting stimuli in the environment by using their sensory organs, just like humans, right? So the mechanisms and capabilities of each animal to respond are different. So they have different organs and also different responses. Okay. Animals such as ants, snakes, frogs, and birds are believed to be able to predict earthquakes. Okay, very interesting. So scientists are investigating the types of stimuli detected by these animals before earthquakes occur. Okay, so now let's look at uh, different types of animals with different uh, responses. Okay, the first one is the South African hedgehog. Okay, so the South African hedgehog has uh, small ears, okay, if you can see here, but the hearing of these animals is quite sharp. So when confronted with threats, okay, it will erect its spines, which can vibrate to produce sound. So since some of these spines are hollow and can produce sound when vibrating, so when touched, the spines are fired at the enemy. So this is the response produced by the South African hedgehog. Okay, very interesting. Okay, this next one we have Rami Rezi. Okay, Rami Rezi is a very beautiful ornamental fish as its sparkling body radiates light. Okay, produce lights. So, the fish has a modified muscle in the tail. Okay, over here, which can produce an electric field. So the resulting electrical current can protect itself from predator fishes. Okay, so remember that this response only uh, being uh, stimulated by certain stimuli. If let's say there is a predator comes near to the fish, then only the fish will produce the electric 
field. Okay, so another fish that can produce the electric field is uh, this Gymnarchus niloticus. Uh, okay, so that one is the scientific name of this fish. This fish too can produce electric field to protect itself from the predator fishes. Alright. Okay, the next one is Cockshafer. Okay, Cockshafer will secrete pheromones and leaves behind in the path of their movement. Alright, so these pheromones will attract male cockchafer for mating purposes. Okay, so the scientific name for cockchafer is melolonta, melolonta. Right. Okay, next, viper. Okay. Okay, so viper has an organ called the Jacobson organ. So this organ is located at the center of the palate to detect heat and is sensitive to smell so the organ also helps the snake to detect and hunt its prey okay based on the heat detected and also smell okay next one we have okay for fish the lateral line so fish have the lateral line on its body which can detect the water flow in their surroundings so this allows the fish to detect prey and avoid predators in their habitats Okay. Next, we have cats. Okay, cats use their whiskers to feel the changes in airflow around them. So this ability helps the cat to move in the dark without knocking into an object and detect its prey. Okay, so besides cat, okay, the other animals which use the same um response is Hysterix africa use trellis or also known as the porcupine, right? Okay, last one is spiders. So, spiders have more than a pair of eyes. So, new studies finds that while the center or principal pair here of eyes is good at picking out details, one of the sides pairs is crucial for warning spiders when something is coming. So, spiders have more than a pair of eyes which can help it to uh, watch what, uh, what objects are in front of them and also whether there's something coming at the back of the spider. Alright, so we have finished learning about the stimuli and responses in animals. So, you know that stereoscopic vision is in the predators and monocular vision is in prey. So, the stereophonic hearing is uh, a hearing which uses both ears and to hear sounds with different frequency ranges for different animals. Okay, so to test your understanding, so you can answer formative practice 1.4 and you can discuss the answer in our group. Okay, so thank you for listening. Okay, thank you for watching. So if you have any questions, you can ask me or ask your friends in our groups and we will discuss the answers together. Okay, bye. Assalamualaikum.